Hi, this is MQ and I'm going to demonstrate how to conduct an efficient and effective exam or assessment using Google Forms that will include all types of questions. Note that if you are looking for a specific type of question, you can scroll down to the description where you will find timestamps to direct you immediately to the question you are looking for. So let's get started. So first thing, you go to your Google Drive, you create a new folder. It's a good idea to generate all your forms in a new folder, and I will tell you the reason later. So in this folder, you create a new Google Form. I'll title it Sample Exam. So the first thing, you need to check the settings, and you always want to collect the email addresses of your respondents. While this option allows the respondents or the students to receive a copy of their answers. If you click on it, you can select either by request or always. However, it is preferred that they receive a copy of their answers after you provided a feedback along with the marking scheme. So we'll just uncheck it. These two better be checked. The first one will restrict the users to your organization, while the second one will only limit it to one response. If you want the students to edit after submission, then you can click on this. So whatever submission they provided, they can revise it again. That depends on the type of assessment. While you don't want the students to see summary charts and text responses, because you don't want them to compare the results with their peers. Next, you go to presentation. Click on show progress bar. This will show a bar that represents the progress of the students in completing the form. You don't want to shuffle the question order because you have a lot of types of questions. And the confirmation message can be customized. For example, this message will be shown to the students by the end of the exam. And then you go to quizzes. You better make this as a quiz. This will assign point values and allow auto grading. Lockdown feature simply means that the students cannot open any other tab or application if they started answering the form. However, this only works if all your students have Chromebooks, so we'll leave this unchecked for now. Releasing the grades better be later after manual review and grading. And here you can check what the respondents can see. Alright, so then you save the settings. The first step is done. Next thing, you customize your form from this button and you can choose a header. You can either upload an image or use one of the available images. I will select this for now. Insert. And this is the header shown. You can also change the theme. The theme color will change the border color of the question. So I will make it darker. And the background color changes the background of the form. I'll make it also a bit darker. You can also change the font. Google Forms currently only allows four types of fonts. There is not much formatting options available in Google Forms, unfortunately. So I'll stick with basic for now. We'll close it. And now let's start. We can add a description. So I'll call this as physics, SEM2. Now the first question, you want to collect the names of the students. In every form, you always want to collect the names. So we'll change from here the type of the question to short answer. Those six buttons are what you can use to keep on adding elements to your form. You can add a question, import from another form, add a text, image, video, or even another section. So in here, we'll start by type your name below and use uppercase letters only. You better make this as a required and we can actually do some validation to make sure the students only use uppercase letters. It's a good habit for the students to practice it. However, I will leave response validation and how we can maximize from it for another video. All right, so next you click on this. Currently you are at this question. You can know by this blue sidebar. So if I click on top, then this is where we are now. If we add something, it will be added below it. If I click on this question, well, this is where we are now. So if I add something, it will be added below it. So I will add a question. This time I will select a drop down type of question and will ask the students to enter their grades. So you key in the grades you teach, make it a required question with zero points. And that's the first two steps. Now, next you want to include the instructions of the exam. 
And to do that, it's actually better to prepare the instructions and the questions in a separate Google Doc first and then import them all to your form, which is what I already did in my Google Drive. This is the sample exam I already prepared, which includes the instructions and 12 questions we are going to go through. 12 types of questions. Since Google Form does not allow a lot of formatting options, you can optimize the add image feature by adding a lot of images. For example, for this, I will use my built-in snipping tool in my device. I always keep it in my taskbar over here. I'll click on new and snip a picture of the instructions. I'll save it, close. Then I'll go to my exam. I'll click on add an image. I'll browse and select the image I just saved. So this is what will be imported. I can just add some text over here as an image title. You can add all the instructions you need. However, a very important instruction that should be included in any form, which is to not click the back, next or refresh button on the browser. You can still, the student can still use the back and next buttons at the end of the Google form, as I will show you later. Then we'll add another question, a confirmation question in this form. An MCQ type with only one option, it's required. This will force the students to read the instructions. And that is the first section, name, grade, instructions, and confirmation. All right, so let's start building the exam. And to do that, we'll first add another section. And for the first types of questions, we have MCQs. So I'll just call this section as MCQ. You can add a description if you want. I will add a question. It's an MCQ type. This is the question. And those are the options. I can paste them all at once. Now you can make the questions required, which will force the student to answer the questions as they cannot go forward in the form unless they answer it. However, I will not do that for this demonstration. I will go to the answer key, give points to this question, and choose the correct answer for your marking scheme. You can also add a feedback to the student. If they answered incorrectly, what should they receive? And if they answered correctly, what should they receive? So for example, excellent for correct answers and wavelength or frequency for wrong answers and save. Click done. Now for the next type of MCQ, as you can see in here, my question is an image. So what I can do is that I can snip it. I'll save it. This was question two. This was question one. It's always a good idea to number your questions. I will add a question. However, this time I will choose multiple choice grid. I will show you why in a while. So this was question two. From here, I can import an image to this question, which is the image I just snipped. Open. You can change the alignment. You can also resize it. And from here in row one, I will type options or choices up to you. And then those are my options, either A, B, C, and D. Go to the answer key, you select the correct answer and you give some point values. So why did we use multiple choice grid instead of multiple choice only? Well, if you see over here in multiple choice, the options are arranged vertically, but in here they will be arranged horizontally. This will just make the question more compact and smaller in size. Since the options are already here vertically, you don't want to take more space and the students will have to keep on scrolling a lot. This will make it easier for them. And then click on done. The question is saved. So this is the first section, the MCQ section. We'll add another section. And this time we have the checkbox question. So I'll copy this. I'll rename the section. I'll add a question and this time I'll select checkboxes. I'll add the question. This is question three and I'll copy all the options for it. Now the main difference between checkboxes and MCQs is that in checkboxes, the student can select more than one answer, but for an MCQ, they can only select one. So for the answer key, 
and I will give it the point value. Click on done. And similarly, for the second one, you can see it includes images. So what I can do, I will snip. I'm just good at caring too much. Then I will simply add a new question. And this time, since it's an image, I will use the checkbox grid. Question four. I'll import it. it too much to you? And copy the question and paste. And here, choices or options, and you have A, B, e, C, and D. Go to the answer key, assign the point values, and check the correct answers. Click done. You can also provide feedbacks for all the questions. All right, so that's two ways to do an MCQ and two ways to do checkbox questions. Let's look at other types of questions. In here, you have a question that has three parts, A, B, and C. Question 5. So I'll leave it in a new section. I'll call it as theory 1. And in here, there is some text and an image. So what I will do, I will insert an image. But first we need to... And then in the image title, you can type, you can copy your text. This was... Question five. Now this question has three sections, A, B, and C. So A is state the name of region A and state the name of region B. Those are short answers, just stating the name, while the last part is state and explain. So this is a long answer. So to do that, I will add a question. In the options, I'll, se I'll select short answer, I'll copy this, Go to the answer key, give it the point. Now, since it's a short answer, it can be autocorrected. For example, here, the correct answer is, you can write it in different forms. For example, all with small letters or all with capital letters. Write all the correct answers you expect your students to type. And then you click on mark all other answers incorrect. Don't worry, you can still do manual checkup later. But if you check on it, it will make marking easier and then click on done. Now, since B is extremely similar to A, I just need to change this letter and this letter. Then I will just duplicate this question and change those minor alterations. All right, don't forget to adjust the answer key. and click on done. Remember that you can always add a feedback and you can always make the question required if you want to. Now for C, this is a different type of question since it's a long answer, not a short one. So you go over here, question, you select paragraph, paste it, go to the answer key, assign the points for it. And this time, it's always a good idea to provide a feedback. It will help you during marking later. It will not automatically mark, but it will always be displayed to you to remind you of the correct answer. You can also add a link to a website or a file in your drive that you want the students to check regarding this question. Or you can add a video from YouTube or from your drive and then click on save. Done. So this is question five. It's always good to leave the question with several sections in a section. And then we'll just add another section for the following questions. Now this is fill in the blank, so let's see how it can be done. And for the fill in the blanks, you also need to snip a picture. So we'll go to the snipping tool again. So I'll add an image. And you have the fill in the blanks. Now how can the students fill the blanks? Well, you need to add a question. This time, make it a short answer and you have A. Sometimes it will suggest response validation. You just remove it for now. I'll explain response validations in another video. So go to the answer key, give the points and type the correct answers for easier marking. You can also get the ideas from the responses and adjust later after the student submitted the exam. It's up to you. Click on this 
and done. Duplicate the question. So this is part B. And don't forget to change the marking scheme accordingly. And that's fill in the blanks. Add another section. And this time I will show you how to also do fill in the blanks. However, if the options are already provided to the student. So what you can do is the same thing. You need to first snip an image with the options. And then you add the questions. This time you select drop down. It's always good to select drop down as drop down compacts all the options, unlike MCQs. And this time you do want to compact them since all the options are already visible to the students under the question. So you just add the options. And this was for A. Go to the answer key, assign point values and choose the correct answer, done. Duplicate. Note that you can also select multiple answers. What this simply means is that the students can select either one of them and both of them will be considered as a correct answer. And that's how you do fill in the blanks. So next, we have true and false questions. Let's see how we can do that in a compact way. You add another section. Make sure you select the last question first and then add another section. I will add a question. However, this time I will select multiple choice grid. Select true or false for each statement below. So those are my two statements. I'll paste them in rows, every statement in the row. And in the columns, you have true and false. Go to the answer key, assign point values, and choose the correct answers. Click on done. Question eight. And that's how you do true and false questions. So next you have matching. I'll do it in another section. You can always combine all the objective questions in one section, that's up to you. But it's always good to add multiple sections as it will keep the students focused while answering each section individually. So for matching, you need to snip an image. All right, so after that, you add a question. This time it should be drop down. So you have four terms you want to match with those definitions. So the four terms are labeled one, two, three, and four. So we'll start with one. And the options you have are either A, B, C, or D. Assign point values and choose the correct answer for one. Duplicate, go to two and adjust the correct answer for it, which is D. So why do we use drop down again? It makes everything compact. It's better than MCQ if the options are already visible to the students as an image. So I'll add another section. And this time we have another type of question. I gave some information and from this information, I want the students to select from giving values the number of those four particles. So to do this type of question, I'll call this section as MCQ and check box grid. So I'll add a question. I'll choose the multiple choice grid. This is the question. I'll add those in the rows. And in the columns, I want the students to receive all the options. So those are the options I want them to see. Go to the answer key. This is how it will be visible to the students. Whatever you added in rows will be presented in rows. Whatever you added in columns will be presented as a column. 
So I'll give point values to each one and select the correct answers. That's it. You click on done. You can click on this, which will require a response in each row. The student cannot skip any row. Question 11 is similar. However, this time, which method is involved in those three options? And there are several methods that could be involved in the same process. So if the selection is more than one, well, it's a similar type. However, this time we'll choose the checkbox grid. To copy the question, question 11, those are my rows and those are my columns. I have possible methods, conduction, convection, thermal radiation. Go to the answer key. This is how it's going to be presented. So you assign point values. Row 4 over here is by mistake. So let me just adjust it and choose the correct answers. All right, so I'll add a new section. Now the last question is a bit tricky as it involves drawing. I provided a figure for the students and I'm asking them to draw on the diagram itself. Unfortunately, you can't draw immediately on the Google form. However, there is still a way to do those types of questions. So let's see how. So first thing, let's prepare the question. I will copy this. I'll call this section as theory two, since we had theory one earlier. This time I will first add a text, a title. I'll add the question here. This is the order, what the students need to do exactly. I will delete it for now and type, click on the link above the image, then click copy to drive. So you get a copy of the image in your drive. So what can you do? Well, you go to the drive. Remember, we created a folder for this exam. And this is the reason because you will add all the materials related to the same sample. And in this case, we will add a Google drawing. I will call it as question 12. And for this Google drawing, I'm going to add this image. I'll snip it. I'll insert an image, question 12. And there it is. You can adjust it the way you want. I can also add some text. Do whatever type of formatting that you want. The following steps are very important. You need to click on share and here click on this. You can select which one is able to see this drawing. You can restrict to only certain names that you added or anyone with your organization or simply anyone with the link. So better stick with this since you and your students have the same domain. However, this part is important. You must make sure it's selected as a viewer, not as an editor. We don't want the students to edit this Google drawing. We just want them to see it. So you copy the link. The link is already copied and then you click on done. Now this link, this is what you need to do. Go to a new tab, paste it. Now you see the last part, this part, you will see from the word edit, just remove it and write instead copy. So you'll select the whole thing, copy it, go to the form. This time you will add an image. You will upload this image and you will paste the link in the title. So this is the instruction. The figure shows something figure 4.1. It's labeled. You can add below. All right, so this is the figure. And you need to click on the link above the image. This is the link above the image. When they click on that, a window will appear to them that will ask them to copy to their drive. So they need to do that and a copy will be implemented in their drives. So then what to do next? Well, after this, you add a question and this time you will select a file upload. It will generate a folder in your drive. You click continue and you copy the instruction, which was actually just this part. So I will paste it in here. Remember this whole thing was question 12. So I can just add on the drawing copied to your drive. So those are the instructions. And then finally, after you are done, rename the drawing and upload here. 
All right, so since this is a drawing file, you need to click on this, allow only specific types and select a drawing. The number of files, well here it's just one file, so I'll just leave it as one. And what is the maximum file size? Well, you don't have to worry about this. If you are a G Suite member, you have unlimited data, so you can make it up to one GB, it's enough, more than enough. And you see this form can only accept up to one GB of files. You can actually change that here, the maximum size of all files uploaded. You can change it to even 100 GB, that's fine, since you have unlimited space. Now you can go to the answer key, give it points. This has two points. You can also add a, a feedback and even the, the feedback can be an image. You can have an image in your drive and add it as a Google file, how it should be, or a YouTube video of, of how the drawing can be done. And the feedbacks will be given to the students after marking. All right, so done. And that's how you do drawing questions. Note that the same idea can be applied for a Google Doc if you want them to edit a Google Doc and then upload here or similarly Google Sheet. The concept is still valid, just remember to change the last part from edit to copy. So one more thing I want you to know is how to use the import question. So when you click on it, it will show you your drive, all the forms in your drive. Let's say I will select this form and from here, all the questions in that form. You can view that form on another tab and see the questions more clearly. For example, this question. I will import it and as you can see it immediately imported the same way it was but I will just delete it from here for now. All right so this is how you use all the functions. Now one more thing before you finish you can always check the total points in here. This exam is out of 30 points and the last part after you finish the questions it's always a good idea to add a section and call it as submission. Moreover, you can add a question and this type you can choose a linear scale and ask your students about the exam. For example, here it will provide a linear scale from 1 to 5. It's up to you. You can choose it. And let's say 1 was easy and 5 is difficult. No points, but make it a required question. And the data from this question will give you an idea of how your students viewed the exam. And based on this data, you can design your following exam. And that's it, you are done. So let's view and answer this exam. Let's see how it looks. All right, you have the first page where you need to key in the name. This is a required question, so I have to answer it. Same as this. And this is also required. If I click next without answering, I can't. This will be highlighted in red, indicating that I must answer this question before I click next. This is the progress bar that you selected to choose in the settings. Those are the questions. So the first part, MCQ, this is how it's shown. See in MCQ, you can't select more than one. It will always be one choice. And those are the back and next buttons the students can use to switch between the pages. We are in page two out of 11. So click on next. Now this is a checkbox type of question. So I can select multiple. Same as here, then click on next. All right. So you can fill in those. Next. That's how it looks. This is how the first type of fill in the blanks looks like. Next. This is how the second type looks like. Drop down does not take a lot of space. It's compacted. When you click on the list, then only you will see the options to select from. I guess you're back. Are you gonna tell me the true and false. This is how it will be presented. With no reply. Next. It's a and the matching. You need to match one with A, B, C, or D. And so on. And this is the number here. I need to find the number of electrons, protons, neutrons. All right, so random selection, next. And this is how the question appears, the last question. So this is the instruction. Well, the student, after they read it, they will click on the link above the image. So let's see what happens when you click on this, you will be directed and then you see the message will be make a copy. Okay, so when you click on it, immediately the name is copy of question 12. It's a good idea to ask the students to type their names and then they can simply just 
draw whatever they want depending on the question and so on they need to learn how to use google drawings it's immediately saved you can just exit now from here you will add a file from your drive and yeah this is the file select click on next and the final thing, how was the exam? Of course, it was easy and submit. This is the customized message we edited earlier. I hope this was beneficial for you. What's coming next is how to do efficient marking. All right, now let's look for the best way to do efficient marking. As you can see, the questions are highlighted over here and the responses for this form are currently three so when you click on the responses you have three sections summary question and individual for summary you will see an overall summary of how well the students answer the average points the median and the range graphical representation but what i want to highlight is it's a good idea to look at the data of your questions especially the auto corrected ones for instance here for question one the green colored bar means that most of the students answered correctly so here all of the students 100 percent answered correctly same as for the check boxes and yeah majority answered correctly all right yeah you see here whenever you see this the majority of the student answered wrongly then you have to think of the possibility that you did a mistake in the auto correction it's unusual for most of the students to answer wrongly so you just check this again or you can use this to inform you what the students need revision in then when you revise with them it's important to highlight this certain question you can also click this to copy the chart for whatever internal use you want to use it for. But again, better to go to the question. This is part one in matching. So if I go back to the questions, matching part one, just check that you highlighted the correct answer. That is correct. So which means most of the students were wrong and you better revise that question with them. All right, so this is a general idea of how to benefit from the summary. You will just see graphs. And then you can go to question, which is the best way of marking. From here, select the question you want to mark. The auto-corrected ones are fine, but let's say state the name. And you see the best thing about it. Well, you can view the answer key over here. And it tells you that two students answered compression, two responses. And both of them are considered wrong because they were not in the list over here. You see here compression was with a capital letter, but this one is with a lowercase letter. So what you can do, well, you can add it to the answer key or you can just simply click on mark as correctly. Edits are pending. They are not saved yet. You need after you finish the whole thing, you can save them. This is the third answer. Well, it's wrong. So it's already marked as wrong. All right. So let's save. Now you can go to the next question. And you can see if you view the answer key, those are the ones over here. It's not included, but this is the correct answer. So we can just click yes. This is also correct, but the student typed this as a capital letter. This is wrong. It's already wrong. And then click save. So we can keep on going into all sections. Well, this is a long answer question. And you see the thing about the Google form is that it arranges the closest answer to your marking scheme at the top. So closer at A, statement is the closer to the marking scheme you provided so it will be arranged at top and then you can decide well okay let's say this is one mark so i'll give it just one mark from here and then amplitude the second closest thing but this is wrong and the further from the marking scheme is placed downwards this could help you a lot this is why it's a good idea to implement the feedback when you mark so this is wrong and click save and that's how you can go to all your questions. Luminous objects, this was auto-corrected directly because it is in the answer key over here. This is not also, but again, you see the arrangement is from the answers that are close to the marking scheme. So this is wrong, this is wrong, all right. And same thing for the rest. So you get an idea of how to mark, especially for the short answer and the paragraph questions. Now let's look at the last question, which is the ray diagram. This is how it will appear. One of them, question left blank, the student did not answer it, and two, submitted their drawings. So when you click on the drawing, 
you can actually see what they did. This is the drawing the student did. Well, what you can do, you can add a comment. All the comments, you can add more than one comment. It's up to you. If you want to provide a feedback to the student. So if you want them to view this form, well, what you can do, you can copy this link. You go to the form and in add a feedback, you click on this link option. You paste the link. This is the link. And let's say you click add and it's added. This is comment on your work. You can also add whatever feedback you want to give the student. You did not study well for the chapter. You can also add a YouTube link. So from here, I will add a video about the lenses. And two links are provided for the student. You click save and that's save. All right, you can also grade, though this is no submission, this was wrong. Now the student, when they click on this link, they cannot really see the work because they need permission. So let's save this. What you need to do, you go back to your drive. Remember, we had a file for the exam. So when you click on it, this is why we placed everything in a file. It's better so that everything is arranged. This is your sample exam, the form itself. And this is the original drawing. As you can see, the form also created a file for the responses. If you click on it, all the responses are here. So what you need to do so in the options, click on share, go to change. Make sure in here your organization is selected or anyone with the link. If you are not a G Suite member for education. And in the share options, make sure it's a viewer. You don't want the students to edit after you provided the feedback. Click on done. So now when you go back to the form, you can also click on individual, which will show you the individual responses of each and every student. You can click on those arrows to change between the students or select a certain email from here. You can see the names in here as you change. This is why the first question should always be asking about the name. From more options, you can download the responses as a CSV file, or you can click on this to create a new spreadsheet that has a summary of all the results. The spreadsheet is saved in your Google Drive in the same folder for your quiz. This is why you are advised to create any form inside a folder and everything related to it will be saved in that folder. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have other forms of questions you want me to include how to do it. I will make sure to include that in part two, where I will also discuss advanced features such as validations and how can they help you in your marketing. Remember, technology is there to help you. If you spend more time in preparing the exam, you spend a lot less time in marking the exam. See you in the coming video. Don't forget to subscribe and like for similar content. Thank you.